everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanted to tackle a little problem that I've been dealing with that has more to do with how I'm recording videos uh, than uh, my lasers. However, I'm gonna use my lasers to hopefully solve my problem. I thought I would bring you along on the journey. And so this video is hopefully going to be mostly just inspirational as to using the tools and doing some basic design work and uh, doing it all within Lightburn to maybe solve some problems. So what my issue is, as I have, this is a Sony ZV-1. It is a very uh, decent camera for close-up shots and for doing video. And what I have is then a Bluetooth wireless microphone here and then it plugs into the auxiliary port. But I have nowhere to mount this receiver on here. I could try putting it on the tripod and such, but I want it fixed to the camera. So no matter what uh, tripod or whatnot I'm using, uh, I can have it attached and not just dangling off of the camera putting strain on this cord. So I have purchased this extra plate on bottom and it does have this quarter 20 mount on point on it. And so I'm thinking what I can do is I can make a plate that will bolt on there that this will then clip into and hold this securely. So we're gonna jump into Lightburn, do a little design work. So if that's something that interests you, stay tuned. We're gonna jump right into it. Now this is a quarter 20 bolt and I happen to have this nice little nylon thumb screw that will mount in there fairly easily. And so if I just tighten that down, that will work. And so my thought is I'm gonna do a layered plywood design that then this will have a slot that this little clip can go into. So I need to take a few measurements and we're gonna need our clip to be maybe about three quarters of an inch wide. That'll give just enough wiggle room side to side and then it needs to have a gap of just under a quarter inch. So if we do a quarter inch gap, that will be allow this part to slide in over that. And then the overall thickness of it uh, cannot be any taller than seven eighths. So I'm thinking three quarters of an inch. So that is going to be our measurements that we need to base it on. And then as far as the width, I need to have enough room for this bolt. And so that is a little over half an inch. And then the center of that post is going to be about 5 16 in. So I'm going to need something that is roughly about 2 inches wide should give us a pretty good dimension. So 2 inches wide, 3 quarters inch tall. We know where this needs to be in that. So uh, I mean, let's jump into the computer and we'll go from there. All right, so we are in Lightburn here. And so I'm actually not used to designing a lot in Lightburn. I usually use either the graphics programs I have access to or the CAD programs I have access to because I'm used to them and uh, the tools that are available to me there. But I know a lot of people don't have the extra softwares and they wanna use Lightburn, they paid for it. So we're gonna go ahead and use Lightburn. I've uh, got a few tips and tricks I'm gonna use myself now these could be bad habits and you yourself may be better at designing in Lightburn. And so if you're one of those people and have some tips or tricks, hey, leave a comment down below. I'd love to learn. Uh, I'm just really trying to inspire people to not rely on just uh, items that they can have designed by other people, but to be able to jump into the software and design your own. So let's jump into this. Uh, like I say, if you got comments about better ways to do this, by all means, please leave a comment down below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by drawing our basic shape. And so we said that was gonna be two inches by three quarters inches. So we can just draw a rough rectangle here and then we can select it and we can come set our actual items. I'm gonna leave it unlocked. And so our width needs to be two inches and our height needs to be 0.75 for, two, for the uh, two, and, uh, two wide and three quarter tall. Now I have that quarter 20 uh, bolt that needs to go over on this side and we said that the center of it was about 5 16 in So I am going to give myself a tool layer to try to line that up. So I'm going to draw a Another rectangle and I'm going to start it down here I'm going to roughly estimate where that's going to be and then we will adjust this box again We're going to come up here and our width needs to be for 5 16 that would be Point to three one two five, and then for our height it would be point three seven five for half of three quarters. So point three seven five, and now what we can do is we can move this into the corner, 
and get our objects to line up. And now we know that our, our bolt hole needs to go off of that. And so we're gonna draw a perfectly round circle. I'm going to select it, put it back on our cut layer. And then I'm gonna adjust this to be a width of 0.26. That'll be just slightly larger than our bolt to allow a little wheel room. And I'm gonna grab it in the center and I am going to snap it to the corner of that box. Now, this will be our rough box shape. This will be the bottom and the top layer. However, I need to add in the middle layers that are gonna have that slot in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this whole object, I'm gonna do Control C for copy and a Control V for paste. You can get rid of this tool box on there. We're gonna leave the, the uh, hole for the bolt. Now I need to give myself another guide because I need there to be a slot, but I need to have some width in here. So I am going to bring this over and I'm going to draw a box that is random size. I'm gonna draw a random size box. I'm gonna put that back on the tool layer and we're gonna unlock this and we're gonna make the width 0.125 and then we will move this over to this corner. Really just trying to snap that there. There we go. I didn't move the box, I grabbed it here and that just helps, allows us to snap the corner. So now that gives us our gap and now I want to draw another box. This time it's gonna be on our tool layer. And this one is going to be starting here and we're gonna come it's so going to be uh, 0.75 square because we want it three quarters inch by three quarters inch. So I'm going to draw that. Once again, I'm going to select it. I'm going to go 0.75 by 0.75. And then we'll move this. Oh, I'm going to grab it and we will move this to snap into that corner there. Now we have our shapes for these items. We can go ahead and select our tool. We can delete that out. All right, so now that we have our box in place and we removed the tool layer, what we can do is actually just use the Boolean command to combine these two. So we come up here to Tools, Boolean Assistant, and what we want to do is we want to actually subtract A from B. So that is going to subtract the box, the three-quarter inch box, from the middle section here. And so we just click on that, hit OK. Now we have our two parts. So what we could do is we could take two of these, two of these, and two of these, and layer them up, and we have our rough box. We should have our object. However, I wanna just soften things a little bit. So now that we have our objects, I'm gonna come up here onto this one, and I am going to take our radius tool, and we already have it set to 0.125, so that's an eighth of an inch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into each one of these corners, I'm gonna click in the corner, and it should allow us to radius those corners. So there we go. We've got that one, we've got that one, this one, and that one. And then we're going to come up here as well. We're going to select, now we're going to select this object. I'm actually going to ungroup that first. Come back to our radius tool. Click on here. We're going to hit that corner and that corner. I don't need to do these because that's going to be our channel, but then I also want to come over here and I want to hit this corner and that corner. Now that will give us a nice soft round edge on all of our shapes as we line them up on these corners. So now that we have those, I can go ahead and I'm going to also delete this tool item there. And we have the basic objects we need. What I'm going to do is now take this. I am going to make a copy of it, paste it here. So we have our two items there. And then I'm gonna do the same with this. I'm gonna go Control C, Control V for paste. We'll drop this in line there. We'll move this down closer over here, not to waste any material. And then once again, we're gonna do a Control C, Control V. Just kind of squeeze these together and we want to be perfect, we can align them horizontally, and then we'll bring this over here. 
So that's it. Our items are ready to cut out. So we are going to set it to the laser and then we'll glue it up and see if our prototype worked. All right, all of our parts cut out just fine, and so now we just need to simply glue them together. I'm going to be using some Starbond Thick CA that allows me to apply some on, and uh, it'll squish out, give me a little squeeze out, and then I can just set everything up fast with the accelerator. Uh, so we're just gonna start with one of the pieces. This is the top and bottom interchangeable, so we're just gonna grab one of those. And uh, I'm gonna start with these smaller, thin pieces, and so, it's just a matter of gluing these together, so I'm just going to kind of do this, time lapse it, and we will come back once it is all done. Copy. All right, and so here we go. That is, there is the end result of making up just that simple jig within Lightburn. The camera mount is, or the microphone mount is now securely on the camera. I can still put this on the tripod and it'll stay out of the way. And if I need to, I can actually rotate this around and just loosening this up, I can rotate this up and out of the way. So it's even, if I have anything below it, it's also secure that way. So. Nice little flexibility in just a few minutes of design work and cutting out on the laser. So I hope this maybe inspired you to play around with Lightburn for design work and not just rely on items that you get from others online. And uh, like I said, I have, do a lot of my design work in CAD, but I'm trying to do more in Lightburn. So I hope this inspired you to do some playing and gave you a couple tips and tricks there. But if you are more of a master in Lightburn and you have some tips and tricks for all of us, I'd love to see it down in the comments below and uh, we'll share them out in a future video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was inspirational. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, uh, hit that like button, share this. That all goes to help the channel. Uh, I do try to make sure that I'm putting good information out there that uh, is not just salesy, but actually helping you out in your workshops and playing with your lasers. So if you appreciate that, I would love to have earned your like, your subscribe and your shares. If you'd like to learn more, and uh, get some real-time help. My friend David from the Clack Shack and I do a live stream every Sunday night, 7 p.m. Central. Come and join us on either channel and uh, find out what we're doing in our shops, find out what new products we're learning about, and ask your questions because we'd like to answer them live and help people out. We also have a Facebook group, Laser Engraving Community, that it grew out of that live stream where people can share what they're doing, ask questions, and uh, get real-time answers even outside of our live stream. So check both of those out for us. Otherwise, I will hopefully see you again in the future, but in the meantime, I hope you can get out into your workshop and make something too. We'll see you next time.